Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be replacing this fairly industrial looking um, rear end uh, with some with a tail tidy basically with a, a much neater solution that I uh, that I acquired on eBay and yeah I'm not I'm not massively uh, keen on this it looks like something that was knocked up in uh, metalwork class in high school so I'm going to take all of that off um, this will also be removed and then we're going to replace it with something a lot tidier now um, I hadn't initially intended to do this but um, I came across a bit of a bargain when I was uh, when I was hunting eBay for some new indicators so if we come down the front of the bike. Here we can see that this indicator here is obviously in very bad condition. It's got a break in it and all that sort of good stuff. So um, what I did was I, uh, I went on the hunt for a new indicator to replace it with. Now, a new indicator um, was, uh, was, was silly money. Even secondhand, they were silly money. However, I happened upon an entire tail tidy with a pair of OE um, indicators fitted to it for the same price as what uh, Fowler's wanted for a brand new indicator. So it made perfect sense to buy it. So, uh, so I did. So anyway, what I'll do, I'll uh, run you through the parts that I've got, uh, have a look at them, and then we'll set about getting it fitted. <laughs> Okay, here is everything I uh, everything I picked up. Now this obviously is a much neater looking solution. Uh, I think you'll agree it's quite well made. However, it wasn't in this condition when I bought it. So what I'll do, I'll stick a picture up of uh, how it looked uh, in the uh, in the eBay ad because when I initially bought it, I wasn't interested in this bit. I just wanted the replacement indicator. Um, now it's worth noting that. The rear right indicator is identical in every way in the same part number as the front left, it's just the other way up. And, and likewise with the rear left, it's the same as the front right. Um, so obviously that's what I was looking for. But I got all of this as a, as a one-er for the same price as one brand new indicator, so I was quite pleased. Um, as I said, it was in pretty uh, poor state. All this was painted, but it had all come off, and I don't think it had been painted with a particularly great paint that was... Um, you know suitable for for where this was going to be because it gets it gets battered a little bit uh, by stones and what have you so it was quite chipped um, i stripped all back to bare metal gave it a good clean up uh, and i've painted it again and as you can see it's quite a nice finish that i've achieved here so what we need to do first before we begin anything else is um put it all back together so let's uh pull the rubber gasket through this is for the this is for the rear tail light. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put all this back in because it'll probably be easier to get all this in while it's off the bike. But the indicators, I'll um, I'll leave them until the end. Uh, the light for the number plate because obviously it is a legal requirement, and then that just locks into there like so now this i actually think is a genuine suzuki part um that has uh been transferred over from the original rear mudguard um obviously i didn't have the rear mudguard to compare it but i believe that that is the original suzuki part um and then what we need to do is fit all these washers and things to hold it all together it's pretty straightforward just a couple of screws. And there we go. Give them a good nip up. All of these screws and things, I did give them a little bit of a clean up. They were all quite rusty. I mean, they're not brilliant now, but you don't see them anyway, so I'm not overly concerned. And there we are. And then all we've got to do is fit the mudguard, uh, sorry, the not the mudguard, the number plate even, and then um, fashion up some sort of reflector, because we do have to have a reflector. 
Now, when I got this, there was a little round one just mounted there. Um, what I might do is actually just put an oblong one at the bottom of the number plate, or even put that little round one um, in the bottom corner of the number plate. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I can look at that later. Anyway, what I need to do now is figure out how all the rear end comes apart, and then we can look at getting this one on this bike. As you can see, this bit of plastic here is where this is going to sit, so you can appreciate that it's going to sit a little bit further back and should look a little bit sleeker than all of this. Um, that is the hope anyway. So uh, yeah, let's, um, let's get all of this pulled apart and uh, look at getting this bit out. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take the seats off. Uh, obviously the front one wasn't bolted in. And the rear one, I'll just unlock. And then we should be able to have a good idea as to where we need to be in here. So there's a little push pin there, there's a screw here. Um, obviously this needs to come off the grab handle. Uh, these two screws, these two screws, and then I think that's the bodywork off. Got the push pins there at the back. Uh, yeah, I think that may be it. Let's start taking things out and see where we get. I've never taken the seat unit off an SV before. So this is new. Uh, obviously, all of this damage does need to be repaired. Um, the whole bike will be getting painted, re repainted. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on what colour I'm going to go. Um, if anyone's got any ideas, there's there's a few stock um, SV colours that I do quite like. Um, I do quite like the burnt orange colour. Um, I find it quite an attractive colour for, for this bike. I also like black. I do like the silver as well, but I'm not 100% sold on it, if, uh, if I'm being honest, because I've already got a silver bike in the VFR, so um, something different might be uh, in order. Put that screw there out. I don't know if that's captive. Probably a little clip behind there that that's screwed into. Right, um, let's have a look at the 12s, 12 mil. Yep. These are quite tight for obvious reasons. I like how someone's put the uh, the tire pressures. On a little label just there that's quite cool saves you going hunting in the mag in the uh, manual trying to find them i believe at some point somebody did love this bike um it was probably used as a commuter for someone i'd imagine she's a bit raggedy around the edges but we'll get there with her um and we'll send that to powder coat but again i'm not going to do that until i know what color i want the bike to be okay so Right, the whole thing does feel loose now, so I think what we'll do, we'll get that pop pin out, that pop, the, the, yeah, and those two there, and I think, I think that might be where we need to be. Right, I need to go and get something pointy to get them out with. Okay, let's get these pop pins out to remove them. Just push the center in, and then they pull out like so. Um, I've seen, seen people getting confused with these and not realizing that the, the center actually pushes in and uh, then really struggling to get them out, but that is how they come out. Except for these two are quite stuck in place. Yeah, these have been in there a while, they don't want to move. There we go, crikey, that did not want to come out of there at all. The same with this one, no doubt. Yeah, and then to, uh, oops, I'll get that back in a second. Yeah, to reset them, all you do is you push them back out like so, and then put it in, push it, and then they're uh, they're good. Yeah, so I'll drop that one. I'll get that one back in a moment. Right, how does this come off? I can't see anything else holding it in place. 
we've got the light, the tail light there is fitted with two bolts either side there. Uh, I think we might be almost there. Right, underneath there's another couple of push pins I've just discovered. Uh, well, there isn't on this side. <laughs> right, here and here there should be a couple of push pins, which there are on this side. This side has got them fitted, so one and two. So I do need to get some more. Um, again, just push them in. I'll have to order up a couple of those. They're ridiculously expensive for what they are. Um, I think you can actually get these, like a, a pattern part for these, again, on uh, places like eBay, stuff like that, where you can get like 10 for two quid, whereas one from the dealer, one OEM one would probably be the same price. Okay, right. There is my little pin. <laughs> the one that I dropped a second ago, it's uh, fell out by itself. Right, I think we may be in a position to slide the whole thing off. I just need to be mindful of things like wiring for the tail light. That's the wire for the tail light. And this will be the wiring for the indicators because it's exactly the same as the wiring from those. There we go, that's the indicators disconnected. I'm not sure what this is. What is this? That's quite interesting. So we've got a different bit of wiring here. We've that's obviously aftermarket. I'm not sure what that is. Goes from an indicator to two cables. Hmm. Okay, that may become apparent very shortly. Take the tool kit out. Got a full complement of Suzuki tools here. They're a little bit rusty. What I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, treat these for rust and then uh, replate them. I'm going to do a video on replating, which is uh, going to be pretty cool, I think, um, for those people that are interested in that kind of thing. Um, hopefully, uh, you'll enjoy that one. And here's another indicator. That's another indicator style connector. Um, right, I think they may be for. I think they may be for these number plate lights, these ones here, actually. And then that one and that one are for the indicators. It's a little bit confusing under here, there's quite a lot of wires. Uh, some of which aren't actually standard. Okay, right, where are we now? I think we might be okay. So the only other thing that's holding it in now is the lock for the seat unit. Now, if you come in here, we can see the lock just here and to get that off it's just a case of popping it out twisting around to the slot lines up with the cable and then popping it out like so and there we go right let's get all of this out of the way and there we are right that is the whole tail unit removed and it wasn't actually that um that difficult at all complete with the tail light and uh, yeah, when it comes to painting and repairing it, um, that's the way to go. Uh, obviously, while it's off, I think what I might do is maybe give it a look, do a bit of plastic welding. I've got a full plastic welding kit again, that'll be a good video to watch. Um, but for now, I'm gonna pop this to one side and then we can look at this bit. Right, with that removed, we've got a better view of uh, what's going on under here. And um, holding this whole section on, there's a bolt there and a bolt there and the same on the other side. However, you cannot get to the heads of these bolts at the moment because this under tray seems to be covering them. Now, I'm not sure if it's a case of just removing that bolt and this bolt and then the whole thing drops down. I'm not sure. So it's going to be a case of trial and error with this. But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to remove all of this because it's held on with three bolts um, and it's pretty, uh, pretty simple to get at. Just a couple of nuts underneath. So I'll get that on there and then crack these off. Has dropped out. I'll go back and get them in a minute. Uh, 
Okay, there we go. Right, the only thing holding this in now is the cabling. So what I'll do, I'll feed the cabling out and then we'll pull it out. Okay, got the two cables for the indicators out perfectly fine, but the ones that go to the lights um, are obviously joined together. So I think there's actually a plug under here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chop off the uh, heat shrink with my knife. That's a chocolate block, lovely. The scourge of any automotive install. <laughs> there we go, right. Um, easily removed, just a case of uh, getting my little screwdriver out, undoing them, and then this whole thing will come out. There we go. Right, obviously I'm gonna need that bit later on when it comes to uh, wiring up the um, the new number plate light. I'll probably need that, so what I'll do, I'll get rid of that chocolate block though, and uh, we'll solder it and uh, do it properly. Okay, so let's pull them out. And there we go, that's the whole thing removed. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit, um, a little bit agricultural to say the least. It's, um, yeah. Uh, that reflector there um, actually does have a bolt on the back of it. I'm wondering if that is actually an OE one. I don't know. I'd have to look at the parts. The parts which it's got Japan written on it. Very possibly this, the um, the stock OE Suzuki one. Anyway, let's uh, ditch this to one side and then look at how this bit of plastic comes out. Right, so one bolt there, one bolt just in here. And if we look underneath, you can see there's actually no access to the heads whatsoever. Um, so this needs to be moved out of the way. I'm not sure how far we're gonna have to go with this, but there's a Allen headed bolt there and a 10 mil bolt on the side of the battery tray. It may be that we need to remove both of them and the whole thing will tilt down. I don't know until I try, so let's give it a go. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with the ones at the back. I mean, it's very possible that just undoing these ones alone will be enough because there's probably a little bit of flex in this under tray. There we go, that's two bolts. Right then, let's have a little look at this. Mm, nah, we're not gonna be that lucky, I don't think. I can get to, I can get to these ones. Let's have a little look at what. Okay, there is enough flex in it, it's a bit, it feels a bit destructive, but there we go. Right, there we are. So we have got enough flex in order to be able to get to these bolts, one there and one there, and then we're laughing. Right, let's get them out. Okay, so with this gently pulled down, we can actually get in to all the bolts under here. Undo them. Luckily, they've been quite well protected, so they're they're not rusty, and the heads are pretty in pretty decent nick. removed okay so with this all out we can fit the new one so it'll basically go into the same place hold on with those bolts and then I'm assuming that covers back up where it was so yeah let's uh, let's go and get it and see how it fits all right then 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit these beforehand because routing the cable in is going to be a pain to do after I've fitted it, um, having had a look at the way it goes together. I've also discovered that I don't need that at all because obviously I've got it already on this one, so that's junk. Um, what they've conveniently done is they've colour coded all the connectors. So black, grey and white go to black, grey and white on the bike. And obviously what I need to do is I need to make sure I get them the right way around. Now, on the one I took off, the black one was on this side, so I'm going to fit that one on this side. Otherwise, when we go to indicate, we'll be indicating on the wrong side of the bike, um, if we don't do it correctly. So, let's uh, get it all together, and then um, we can fit it to the bike in one go. And this is going to be a bit fiddly. Place. Oh, these are a bit dirty, but they'll they'll clean up when I wash the bike. You can tell which way around they go because there's like a little hole just at the bottom of each lens. Uh, I'm not sure if that's there as a lever to help you get it off, or whether it's actually there for a drain. Maybe if they uh, if they get water inside, um, it allows you to drain them off. Makes makes sense to me. tighten these because these are little plates are only made of plastic and I don't want to crack them. There we go. Right, that's that all on. What we need to do is route the wiring through where we want it to go. So it's going to go through there, but I don't like the fact that that's metal with cabling going through. So I've got some grommets. I'm going to get the grommets out and then uh, pop the grommets in and then we can put the cables through. Okay, there we go. So we're ready to put it back on the bike and get it all uh, fitted up. And as you can see what I've done, I've fitted a little rubber grommet uh, in each of those holes. Just to, just to stop the cable chafing really because it's just the right thing to do um anyway yeah hopefully the uh the cables are in the right place um looks like they are the uh the one with the black connector on for this one is actually longer than the other two so obviously um it's got to go to the other side of the bike from where the loom comes down this side so so yeah right anyway enough blabbering on what we'll do is um offer it up to the bike and get it in and uh hopefully It'll go together quite easily, uh, much like the old one came out. So, if we, that's got to go through there like that, no, like that actually. And there we go. So, if I move those over there, and then I line up the holes, whereabouts where we want to be so now what I need to do is again with a bit of flex bearing in mind there isn't a great deal of flex is just get the four bolts back in that were holding the old one in place okay so we've got all the cable in there I'll look at that in a moment and we need to do that right now okay there we are 
that's it all bolted up and I think you'll agree that that looks pretty uh, pretty nice right what I need to do now is pop the bolts back in the sides of the uh, under tray and tighten them up Right, and that's that. What I need to do next is get the tower unit back on and then uh, that'll give us the overall impression of the way it sits on the, uh, on the bike. Okay, so what I need to do is get, get it semi in position and then I've got to kind of rotate the cable for the lock so that I can lock it back in its position. Just there, and that should be good. Right then, now let's manoeuvre this back in place. That's the cable for my Optimate that's poking out. Okay, make sure that I get all of this like behind it. So, and there we are, right. There is a little gap there, but looking at it, it looks to have been trimmed. That doesn't look factory. There's, uh, yeah, I think somebody's trimmed it in the past with the, when they were fitting that previous one, perhaps it didn't quite fit properly. Um, but it's not, a, it's not a showstopper by any, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Right, I think we're in roughly the place we want to be. Right, let's get the uh, plastic clips back in position. Obviously these ones at the back here I didn't actually need to uh, remove at all. Um, that's them. One here. That screw went there. And then these four screws go into these four positions here. all those screws in. Next is the grub rail. The cabling for the light can go underneath that bracket. Obviously this does need to go back on uh, because the actual grab rail itself forms the hook for the rear seat to hook onto. Um, I know people do remove these, um, but I'm not sure really what they do with this. I've um, not really looked into it to be honest. Right, okay, now let's look at all of our cables. So that one is for the Optimate, so I'll leave that one out of the way for the moment. We've got our Indicators, that's the black to black. We'll lock them together. And then under here, we've got all the uh, all the other cabling. And again, they're all color coded conveniently. So 
white to white. When it goes together, why are you not going together? Come on. There we are, that's it. Didn't want to go together properly. Right. Then the grey one to the grey one. Again, it's not been a bit of a pain. There we go, they're together. And then the tower light is the last one. And that is that. Okay, and there we go. Right, optimate one can go in there. And that's pretty much that. Right, let me go and grab the seats. We'll get the seats on. Okay, tool kit back in. Rear seat on. And then front seat on. I'm not going to lock that down because uh, I'm not taking those bolts out because I'm in and out of here at the moment quite a bit. Right, there we go. That is the rear under tray fitted. And I think you'll agree that it looks a damn sight better than what we had before. Um, it is a shame that these little bits of this under tray have been cut out. Uh, that is an annoyance, but it's, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not going to lose sleep about it. I do need to put the pins in here, uh, but obviously I've only got two, so I'll put two in and I'll get another couple on order. And then, uh, yeah, we're good. Right, what I need to do now is just make sure that all the electrics work. Okay, there we are with the number plate fitted as well. Uh, I think you'll agree that that looks a lot neater than what we had there before. And I'm really, really pleased with <laughs> Look at all this uh, chain loo that's flung. Um, yeah, it's... Um, a lot, a lot neater than uh, than what it was before. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just turn on the ignition, and make sure that everything's working. Got a brake light, left indicator, right indicator, and I'm also just going to quickly check the foot brake and we're all good and as you can see the uh, the number plates also working so happy with all of that so we can turn the ignition off and there we go we can call that a completed job i am uh, yeah i'm uh, i'm pretty pleased with the way that that's turned out and it's I'm, I'm even more pleased based on the fact that i actually had no intention of doing it it was um i, I got that under tray purely as a bit of a bonus really just by uh, wanting to buy um, some uh, some indicators so I've got an indicator now to go on the front I'm not gonna bother videoing that it's uh, it's pretty straightforward to replace an indicator but yeah hopefully um, you enjoyed this video and if you did feel free to give it a like or a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below and uh, I'll do what I can to uh, to get back to you um, join me on the socials Facebook Instagram and Twitter Kev Shed um, I'll leave links to all of those in the description below. Anyway guys, hopefully we'll see you for the next video. Take care. Bye bye now.